And I'm sorry, that's a real bummer. In the grand scheme though, I mean, this agenda was not as bad. So at least we're not pushing off time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if anybody needs to jump off, I'll stay on for the 7.30 and 7.35. It's really up to you guys with what you're comfortable with. Um, I only see uh, Brittany Fer Ferber from Niche Engineering on there. But other than that, I don't see any attendees. Erin, do you want me to stay on? Come again? Do you want me to stay on? I don't, I don't mind staying on, Jen. I mean, I think I can hold up my voice can hold on until we get through <laughs> i wish you weren't so stubborn <laughs> i can keep Aaron company if if that works for a little bit but you all should you know if you want to head off that's fine okay so just just I'll just announce to to Brittany because Brittany's on in the audience in case she's listening that we just it was just brought to our attention that this meeting was not posted properly on the town clerk's website. And so as a result of that, we actually can't um, we can't hold the meeting since it wasn't properly posted. So we're just going to basically be continuing hearings tonight and we're going to have to reschedule um, all the business until the next meeting, which is on. March 20 March 22nd yes so we can't talk about like the DPW memo or anything the MOU no okay shouldn't yeah we could mm -hmm. review that uh, uh, via email you know not not corresponding with all of us via email, but one off with Aaron if we wanted. Do, um, Aaron, maybe we should do that. It's just um, I'll send comments and then you can send it out. People can individually email Aaron any comments they have, and that way we can send it before. Or yeah, and I make progress before March twenty second. I put a word version of the DPW menu um, memo in the. Mm -hmm. I think the correspondence folder, but if anybody needs me to actually email them a copy, um, I mean, I can email it to the whole group and or, um, you know, individuals if you need it. I, I've got mine right here. Okay. <clears throat> I'm glad you guys can access on there so easily. So just to confirm, we're not holding our meeting. So is there any reason for me to stay on? Uh, okay, then I will go sit by my fire with my children. I know, I know you all will be heartbroken. <laughs> yeah, have, right. they will be because they get to watch a movie on meeting nights. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna crash the party. Oh well. Wow. All right. Well, I'll see you guys um, in a couple weeks. Sounds good. Bye, Michelle. Right, thanks, Bye. Michelle. Okay. Bye, Michelle. See hey, you guys. I, I guess. Bye, I'll, Andre. Thank I'll you. Goodbye. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Again, thanks for the words, Jen. Yeah, same to you. All right. Bye. All right, Aaron, are you sure? Because yeah, I'm happy, no, I'm happy I'm... to stay. <laughs> please, I'm gonna, please. I'll okay. chill with Aaron for a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll tell Thanks, bad guys. jokes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I wish I could think of one right now, but wetlands, I can't. <laughs> wetlands jokes. There's so many good wetlands puns. Really? They're my favorite. Yeah, I'm swamped water under the bridge you know uh well, i can sh i had this whole experience this week so this we're doing this project at work um it's pretty cool actually where we're we developed a machine learning model that allows us to predict flow from image data so mm -hmm. what this does is enable us to take pretty low cost game cameras and aim them at streams um collect that image and then get a flow hydrograph um, and it's not like gold standard data. It doesn't have as quite as much accuracy as like a full blown USGS gauge, but it's really good data where otherwise we don't have any information. Um, and we're really focused on this for refugia work where most of our like very sensitive aquatic kind of habitats are in the headwaters. Um, but it has a lot of other applications. So if you're thinking like flow permanence, 
um, ephemerality, ice and ice out, seasonality of the hydrologic cycle, things like that. Um, and so we are working like with these water science centers all over the country to kind of deploy these cameras and collect all kinds of different data to like train this model. And we have one, um, a camera down in the Pine Barrens, New Jersey. And this week we caught a beaver building a dam across a weir in 15 minute increments. And you can see, you can see like nothing on the weir 15 minutes later, like 20 giant logs across the weir with like the beavers, like beady eyes. So the work like email train about like making beaver jokes about the beaver building mm -hmm. dams <laughs> went on for like literally 20 minutes. 20 I want to hear those. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah, it was. It's pretty funny. We're very proud of ourselves for, for catching a busy beaver on film. It I, it's, it's always amazing what they are able to accomplish in a night. It's yeah. just stunning. Yeah, it's they're really, really incredible. Yeah. Alex sent me some pretty excellent videos about beavers, which I watched today, finally. Yeah. Um, and they, I, you know, it's really amazing. Um, the, a lot of it is uh, the benefits of beavers for climate change. They're all kinds of, they found through research, all kinds of um, information basically pointing to like beavers, beaver um, impoundments keeping the temperature down not only in the water but also in the air around the mm -hmm. impoundment which is just I mean it's just amazing and it was like all kinds of information about um, how they build their lodges and how they survive inside and it's like they're really fascinating creatures really cool uh, have you guys read that book eager um, by mm -hmm. Ben Goldfarb it's really good it's all about beavers and like oh. their like value to ecosystems mm -hmm. like and especially habitat refugia and groundwater recharge and kind mm -hmm. of both their historic role mm -hmm. and kind of what they are doing now it's very good I have a copy I'll, if I maybe I can bring it to you Aaron on Friday Wait, what cool. you, when you see what they can do in a night or in a week and then it takes us humans you know now what does it take us to rebuild a bridge on Station Road, or you know, it takes us a year, <laughs> two decades. <laughs> you know, right? I mean, you know, literally, you know, to, yeah. to put a bridge or or something like fairly simple over a ten foot wide stream, it takes us a year and three million dollars. And it's like, yeah. really, uh, the know. beavers They're could do it in about three nights. Yeah, so, yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, thanks, guys, very much. I'm sorry about this curve fluff. Um, Aaron, yep. but I hope you feel better. Thank you. I'll um, I'll be fine over the weekend. I just need to recharge. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and thank I reserve the town room for us Friday at noon. So oh, great. We'll have plenty of space. <laughs> but you have to be feeling better because I can't. Yes. Get oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yep. Okay. If cool. I'm not Thanks. if I'm not better, I'll I'll we'll reschedule for next week. Okay. Sounds good. Take care of yourself. Of course. I'll talk to you guys you. soon. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. So I see that Steve Viano just joined. Um, Steve, just so that you're aware, we've we've had a little bit of a um, um, an issue because the uh, meeting agenda didn't make it onto the town clerk's um, website. And so we can't actually hold a meeting tonight, unfortunately. Um, so everything that's on tonight's agenda is going to have to be continued to March 22nd. Um, so I just wanted to announce that if you have any questions, Steve, um, feel free to raise your hand and I can um, pull you in as a panelist so that we can have a conversation. So I see Steve has his hand up, Aaron. Yeah, I pulled him in. It might just take a second. Oh, perfect. There we go. Hey, Steve. Ahead. Sorry. So, um, okay, so you're saying that um, we're just going to push the meeting back, or the meeting got pushed back until the next time, essentially? Yeah, unfortunately, um, even though it was submitted, it didn't for some reason it didn't make it as a posting on the clerk's calendar, which means that we can't legally hold the meeting tonight. Um, so everything is going to be pushed to the um, March 22nd meeting, and 
um, <clears throat> I will probably be giving you the 750 time slot on that night. Which will see March 20th. But um, I'll have to announce it. I'll have to, we're going to stay on and announce it at the start time of the hearings. There's a 730 and a 735. I believe you were on at 735. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. And then um, do I need to send out another uh, about a notification? No, you don't have to. Uh, will our being on tonight um, yeah. when the hearing was supposed to open will basically be um, what informs the abutters that the continuation is happening. So, okay. so great. So there's no other paperwork or anything that I have to fill out. No, no. Okay. Good. And thank you for the um, photos and the um, proof of recording information and I got your check. I'll be sending that out to the Gazette. So okay, you're all great. set administratively. Perfect, thank you. I will see you on the 22nd then. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. Bye. Bye bye. So are you feeling a little better, Erin, or, or are you on the mend, or where are you? I just have a, a really bad respiratory situation happening. Mm -hmm. um, I have asthma anyways. I have like acute asthma that closes my airway, and when I cough, my airway closes. So um, it's just been really challenging, and I have trouble wearing a mask at this point, like because mm -hmm. I feel like I can't breathe. Um, so yeah, I'm just um, my voice. I'm losing my voice and you know coughing really badly. What it sounds worse than it is. It's mostly just my airway because I feel like I can't breathe. Um, but I, <laughs> I mean, other than that, I'm great. Sure. It's not. It's not like I'm you know like I'm not experiencing like crazy cold symptoms. It's just this like respiratory issue. One more one more bug to deal with this winter. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to wonder um, if, if the coal, if like the illnesses that, you know, over the course of COVID, if the illnesses actually got worse or if it's just our immune systems mm -hmm. got weaker because it seems like comparatively this has just been like the most insane cold flu season <laughs> of my existence. Like I've never experienced anything like this before. Well, you have um, kids in, in daycare. I do. Yeah, and I they do. bring they bring home everything they pick up from daycare. Oh I haven't been sick at all. Um, and you've been sick a lot. And I the one of the differences is kids in daycare. Yeah, I mean they're definitely like little petri dishes and and my first, he had a ton of, of, you know, cough, cold type things, but the severity of these just seems so much worse than before. Um, I mean, like, I, I mean, maybe it's just, again, maybe it's just my immune system. <laughs> the five years in between kids, my immune system got worse and or got weaker. And also being cooped up during COVID, it was like, we were all so sheltered. Our immune systems weren't activated as much maybe i don't know you don't know it could be a combination of factors for sure yeah, my granddaughter just got exposed to strep throat somebody allowed their child to go to daycare with strep throat and they caught it and sent it home but um we're hoping she doesn't she's just 13 months and oh we're hoping she doesn't have to suffer through strep throat no Alex, are they, where are they geographically? Because I was wondering if this was strep throat that I had because it's been really sore in my throat. They're uh, below Providence, um, okay. Rhode Island. They're not in the valley then. <laughs> no. Well, they're when I was a kid. Two hours, two hours away, which, you know, things, care, things travel by car too. Right, that's true. When I was a kid, I remember every time my, my mother took me to the doctor for, because I had chronic ear infections as a kid, they would check me for strep every single time. And I've taken my kids twice in the last week to the doctor once for pink eye and once for an ear infection. And they didn't do any inquiry about strep throat. And I'm like, that's kind of weird. Like, do you have to ask for um, to be swabbed or 
just I was surprised I, I was kind of like you know it could have been strep and we like came and went and there was no even inquiry about w whether it could possibly be that but so I guess the fever and pain would have told us so are we recording we are um we have to stay recording until 7 35 when I do the continuation does this have to be posted though Aaron the meeting yeah what, what we're talking about now I mean just in general since we haven't had a meeting um the meeting doesn't have to be posted on the website per se but because we're holding a public meeting um, the, and the continuations are announced for the hearings, um, just for the sake of being here, um, I would, because if anybody shows up and gotten a butter notice, they would need to be told. No, I'm just saying in terms of, in terms of our discussion, mm -hmm. um, will this discussion live on in, in, in the records? Oh, um, I don't, I don't think we need to have like minutes if that's what you mean, or this meeting would I have meant, to be. I meant the audio and the video from this meeting. Does that have to go to Amherst Media? And if we didn't hold the meeting? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I don't I, believe I so. Not. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Is that where recordings go, Amherst Media? I believe they're they're housed there, and then you can also see them on our website, right, Aaron? Um, yes, we have we have a channel on YouTube. The um, Amherst Conservation Commission has a YouTube channel, which we have a link to on our website. Hmm. So, can I ask about the land use plan and where we are, or is that off topic? Yeah, no, we can't really. Can you can you just tell me where we are at on it? Um, I think I'd rather. I think because it was on the agenda, Alex, it's just kind of a an odd thing. Again, I don't know what we're gonna do. I just don't want to talk about con you know commission business if we're not having a meeting. If you want to just shoot me an email, I can send you a quick update on it tomorrow. Yeah, all I was interested in is calendar, you know, like is that we're not going to cover it until March 22, so it continues to slip. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't slip it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think two weeks from now isn't, it actually gives Aaron and I a little, a little more chance to kind of gussy that up a little bit before the next meeting. Okay. That's fine. I'm not looking for things to do. <laughs> so now you have one attendee. Yeah. I wonder if that's Paige. Uh, so Paige, just so that you know, um, the meeting tonight, there was a problem with the posting on the town clerk website. And so we're actually not able to hold our meeting this evening because it wasn't properly posted. But um, we're just staying online so that we can announce continuations of the hearings. Um, so if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to raise your hands and I can um, pull you in to ask a question. My only question would be, do you know the date they'll be postponed to? Yes, um, it will be um, March 22nd. And the hearings will be um, for, uh, let's see, bear with me just one second. So I think we're going to go um, 7.45 for the 46 fairing and 7.50 for the 21 East Hadley Road. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good Thanks night. for coming. Good night.
Well, I'm probably going to sign off. I'm going to go use this time to work on my, I'm writing a paper on sturgeon. So I'll spend my time writing that. Oh, great. Short-nosed sturgeon or, or other species? Um, short nose and Atlantic. Nice. Nice. I nice. volunteer for an Indian tribe in Maine. Mm -hmm. And um, they're writing the indigenous knowledge. And I was asked to write the Western science knowledge. And um, they have an interesting um, um, story, sort of a creation story, on why they why the sturgeon is a relative. Hmm. They call him the grandfather fish. So oh, I know when I when I worked in Turner's Falls, I know that occasionally people would catch short-nosed sturgeon below the dam in Turner's. Oh. That's then, Boyd Canard. Right, right. And, and uh, well, these were just fishermen <laughs> and would occasionally uh, hook, hook one on. And there was always a lot of outreach about leaving them in the river and not, not keeping them. So, well, they're endangered. Yeah, but most, most people, particularly people who are uh, fishing for subsistence, really. Don't necessarily know that. So, um, yeah, even they spawn do. right below uh, Cabot Station. Mm. Mm -hmm. And if you go swimming at the rock dam, you can see them below the rock dam. Mm. I have never swam at the rock dam. I have fished there. Um, yeah, it's a, a really cool place back there. Yep. Um, quite dangerous in the spring freshet and in certain times of the year uh, when we get a lot of rain. Yeah, yeah. If you if you put on some goggles and it's well, just you don't have to be on scuba gear to to, but a pair of goggles helps. Yeah, one got up through Turner's Falls and was seen over on Vernon. Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So I've written about, well, I don't know, pretty close to 60 pages. And I am I have a meeting on Friday with um, folks from the um, Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada who are going to publish it. So um, I need to get ready for that meeting. I, when, I would tell you one last thing. When I was working in Turner's, I, I worked with a group called the Friends of the Wissatinawag. And we worked with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and this, this uh, um, uh, indigenous group to purchase land, which is kind of uh, across from the Great Falls Discovery Center, across from Turner's Falls. Yeah. Um, it was a site that was heavily looted, sadly, heavily looted during the 60s, 70s, 80s. Uh, you'd go out in the forest there and you'd see like 10 by 10 foot 10, 10 by 10 wide, 10 long and 10 foot deep or deeper holes in the forest where people were looting, you know, uh, native uh, archaeological, you know, uh, pieces. So it's kind of sad, but uh, we, we did eventually buy that, that piece of property and at least conserve it. So kind of a cool project. Yeah. Well, when did you work up in Turner's? I worked in Turner's from... Um, Oh boy, uh, it was a while ago. Um, let's see, 2004. It was in the early 2000s, probably, yeah, like 97 to 2003, something like that. Hmm. Who did you work for? I worked um, for uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation. Mass Department of Conservation and Recreation and um, also for I was jointly paid by the state and um, and um, the town, actually. Yeah, no so, frogs up there. No frogs or toads. <laughs> toads. No it's a joke. Frogs. It's a joke. Oh no, frogs! Franklin Regional Council of Government. What's your favorite frog or toad? Uh, spadefoot toad is my favorite. Yeah, it was a joke. Never mind. Um, I also worked very closely with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service because, of course, that's where the Conti Refuge uh, office was back in the day. Yeah. Um, working with Andy French and Beth Gettle. I don't know if you ever knew Beth Gettle. I know both of them. Yeah, Beth and Tom Gettle. Yeah. 
I used to commute sometimes with Beth Gettle. I think they retired in Maine, if I'm not. Mistaken. Yes, they did. Yeah, great people. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Deb Reynolds. I don't know if you know Deb Reynolds in Migratory Birds, but I work with her a lot. Uh-huh. Carolyn, Carolyn, oh boy, I'm blanking on Carolyn's last name. She was kind of the interpreter up at uh, Great Falls Discovery Center for the U.S. Fish for a while. So yep. I'm feeling old, though, talking about that project. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think we're going to sign off. Uh, right. We had a to... short agenda. I was going to write earlier, Aaron, as I was going through it, saying this will be as quick as the last one, but um, where we gave time back. But it was not very many items on the agenda. So now all of a sudden things are going to pile up. Mm. Oops, you're, you're muted. You're on mute. I said, um, I'm very bummed that the meeting was that we had to cancel it. I'm really bummed about that. Yeah. Good night, folks. All right. Good night, Good Alex. Talk Thank to you, you later. Bye bye. So I'm just going to do the announcement now, Dave, because it's 735. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. That the 730 hearing for SWCA 52 Faring Street LLC for the relocation reconstruction of single family house with associated site work in preparation in the 100 foot buffer to bordering vegetated wetland at 46 Faring Street will be continued to March 22nd at 745 and the 735 request for determination of applicability for in the green gardens on behalf of Stephen and Stacy Gordon to determine if the work proposed to replace and reconstruct stone retaining walls, patios, staircase, driveway reconfiguration, and new shed placement at 21 East Hadley Road is subject to the Wetland Protection Act and municipal bylaw will be continued to March 22nd at 7.50 p.m. And with that, I will stop recording. <laughs>